Welcome back to Lessons in Attachment. One of the most listened to episodes of my podcast is all about obsessing and overthinking. And that's got some top tips there. So I definitely recommend you listening to that one if you haven't already. I know lots of you found me through that episode. But I also do know that it continues to be an issue that so many of you have, the obsessing, the overthinking, the worrying, and the agony of not being able to get this person off your mind. And this usually happens if you're sensing a threat to your relationship or you have an attraction with someone and you're sensing that they're pulling away or leaving or have experienced rejection. These are the kind of things that really tend to trigger that state where you're overthinking and yeah can't get them off them off your mind like I say so let I'm gonna what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna give you I think about like four things that I think can be really helpful for you if you're continuing to obsess and overthink so let me remind you of the key reasons that we overthink One of the reasons is because we're actually avoiding being with our inner experience. So that is your inner feelings, your motivations, your sensations, your inner world. You're not used to being connected with yourself in that way. And so I'm going to look in the camera as well for YouTube. So that means that we do have these strategies to avoid and overthinking is one of them. Another reason is because we are on this mission to fix and change the past and it gives us this kind of like sense of control that if I think about it enough, we can change it and we can stop it from happening again. We know how painful it is, right, when you can't stop thinking about someone. I definitely am not here to help you overthink and ruminate and get in the head of someone else. So, Figuring out why they are breadcrumbing and why they're doing the things that they're doing and what their intentions are, that's actually not going to be very helpful for you. If you're here seeking the answers and the specifics, it's actually going to keep the anxiety going and that keeps the overthinking going. So I do feel like it's useful. And actually, this isn't one of the points that I'm giving, it's just coming to me now. I do feel like it's useful that we have some kind of acceptance of what we can't change. And I know it's really painful, especially if what's happened has been related at all to patterns that you've been trying to heal and change. That can be so frustrating, so annoying when we can see things happening right before our eyes. Something I think we often don't realize with overthinking, and I know I never used to, is that when you're in that state where you're just focused on something else, you have disconnected from yourself. So in those moments, you know, you're not present, you're not in the here and now, we we don't tend to be mindful with our experience, we've kind of gone somewhere else. And obviously, what we want to be able to do is come back to the present moment so that we can actually see things with like through reality and clearer eyes, because the kind of further we go, and the longer that we're thinking, the more that we kind of believe these distorted thoughts and these views that we're having in that moment. An example would be a client of mine who recognizes that she gets into a state of overthinking in bed and gets stuck there and physically it feels like she is stuck and it takes every bit of strength for her to move. And working through that together, it really was a case of us bit by bit helping her to go inwards instead, focus on herself, what she's experiencing, bring her back to the current moment to know that she is lying here in bed rather than being elsewhere, getting up, moving out to a different room and things like that are really, really helpful. Anyway, I'm definitely digressing a bit because there's so much to say on this topic when it comes to overthinking. But let me share with you four points that I've narrowed it down to that I really hope will help you with the obsessing and the overthinking. So the first is that this is a habit. So you are in a habit of overthinking, worrying, ruminating. And so that's a habit that we need to break. I recommend and what I support people with a lot is attention retraining. Now, I will do this through teaching. 
but also I will do this practically with people. So a lot of the resources, the lot of a lot of the classes and support inside the attachment recovery gym and one to one will naturally include attention retraining. This is the practice of recognizing where your attention goes and bringing it back to where you want it to be. And yes, you will have to repeat that over and over again because we all know when I ground, when I try and be in the here and now, I go back to the thing that I was thinking about. This isn't I try it once, this is attention retraining and it takes time. So I definitely recommend that. And I am biased because I love the attachment recovery gym, but it is a really, really good place for you to be practicing that. If you were to do the daily class and the somatic class and just that, forget everything else that we do, I really think that's going to help you with attention retraining. The next point is to be with the fear. And I am a little bit mindful of this one, guys, because I do know that it's like that lingo, just be with the fear. Like, what does that really mean? But it is what quietens down, like our inner critic, our anxiety. What we often don't realize is that if we have a conversation with that something in us that feels anxious or worried, that actually itself can be quite healing. So be with the fear. When you're overthinking, it's because there is a worry. Feel that in your body notice where it is and when you become aware of it you can begin to communicate with it what does it want what does it not want usually we're not worrying or overthinking if there's not some kind of fear going on underneath the third point I just want to say and this is especially for anxious attachers and that is that you need to try and focus on your own state of mind and inner experience So really what is going on from your perspective and what's driving you rather than being too fixated on what the other person is doing because all that does is keeps you in a state of trying to get in their mind and trying to see the world through their eyes and that just continues to put this person on a pedestal, to put them above you And what I really, really want to help you to do here is build a relationship with yourself, with your body, you know, to repair that relationship that you haven't yet had the chance to build. This is where you'll get a sense of self. So moving your attention, the attention retraining away from this person and into your real world is so powerful. And my next tip for you is to have a reconnection plan. Like I say, when you're overthinking, you are disconnected from yourself. So having a plan and really asking yourself this question each day, if you're someone who's overthinking a lot at the moment, again, this is what we do in the attachment diary each day. We ask ourselves, what are the signs I'm going to be disconnected today? for example, overthinking, and how will I reconnect? What tools do you already have in your toolbox to help you to come back to earth, to come back to yourself when you know that you're overthinking? If you can plan that in advance, that's going to help. Just like with my client, where we made this plan for her, when she spots it, when she acknowledges it, she stands up, we did this bit by bit, The goal is to get to her balcony. From there, she's got nature. She's got things that she enjoys. She will get out of that state that will trigger something else. So refocusing on you. Have a reconnection plan for those moments when you're going to lose yourself because it happens, right? We merge with these states. Something I would say, and I know this is going to sound really strange, but try walking through a different door and I don't mean this as like oh let's choose a different path I mean quite literally if you're in a state of overthinking you have a tiny window you've got a window to make a decision to get out of this you're going to see it you're going to have a moment of presence where you're like this is what Carly's talking about I'm overthinking and then you've got a window to make a difference I would say try and physically walk through a door, go through a door in your house, in the room that you're in, because then you're going to be in a different environment. You're going to be sending a message to yourself like, okay, I'm up, I'm out, I'm moving. I sometimes do this on a Friday night if I'm like scrolling and I'm stuck in a hole and I really don't want to be. Sometimes I'm like, right, if I can just get myself up, 
like the the hard bits done and it genuinely does make a difference and I get myself over to the shop get some nice food whatever it might be everything changes once I get up and out so if you are overthinking if you are obsessing over someone do know that this is quite a natural reaction when you're insecure when you're experiencing abandonment wounds and you're going through it right now what we have to do is try and take some kind of action. Your behaviors are going to be really powerful here. And where is your attention? Take that with you. It is going to take a plan. So don't just move on to the next video. Make a plan for yourself. What are your signs that you're overthinking? How do you know when it's happening? And how are you going to break free? And of course, please don't forget that this is one of the things I help people with. It takes time. It takes commitment but it's really possible. So do check out the attachment recovery gym. Do check out, you know, I have Becoming Secure um, where you can work through with me one-to-one -one and in your own time in a group setting. So you can check out these different options and see what best works for you. The link is in the bio.